My name's Travis Jost. Uh, grew up in Kansas, went to Tabor College, graduated from there. I uh, wasn't the most ambitious college senior, but hey, I need a job. Took me about two months to find a job in the summer. Started as a teller at uh, Fidelity Bank here in Wichita, Kansas. You know, I worked my way up, um, took different positions in the bank, um, learned a lot, and our church at Ridge Point was uh, supporting some supporting missionaries in Paris, France. I've never been to Europe. Thought this would be a fun trip. Yeah, let's go. Let's go check it out. You know, I'd grown up in the MB Church. I'd heard missionary stories. I kind of knew what that was about, but I'd never really seen it up close. And so that was an eye-opening experience uh, for me, being in another culture, seeing how they live out Jesus, how they interact with people that don't know Jesus. And I went on that trip, and part of their ministry there in Paris was to hand out tracts, you know, hand out little stories about Jesus in their, in their language. And we don't do that in the United States. That's really uncomfortable for us, but we're just there. We're handing out uh, these little information at the market. And I remember walking around in that space and just seeing everybody's expression, just blank expression, not a lot of joy, uh, not a lot of people interacting. And I get it, like we're not, the most interactive or engaging people when we go to Dylan's, like we have our checklist and we go through our things and people would maybe say the same thing about us, but I just noticed that about the people that were in this market. And I said to somebody out loud, I said, what does God want me to tell these people? And I, I don't think I'd ever thought that before. So I come back from that trip and I'm pretty much a, I'm pretty much a mess. Uh, I don't know what to do with it. I don't know what these feelings are. I don't know what God's saying to me. I remember standing in my kitchen, just weeping, <laughs> uncontrolled. I met with uh, Jana after that, Jana Hildebrandt. We were kind of going over the trip, like what, how was the trip, how did it go, what do we need to change, what do we need to improve on? And then she just flat out asked me, like, are you okay? <laughs> it's like, no, I'm a, <laughs> I'm a mess. I don't know what to do with this. I don't know what's going on. Uh, so I really wanted, that burning bush. I wanted that aha moment. I wanted to God to just open it all up and I would, I would know the path I'm supposed to go on. But it didn't happen. He didn't give me that. But I didn't feel like he closed the door either. So there was still this space where I could say, I don't know what the next step is, Lord, but um, the only thing I could get out, the only thing I could commit to was to say, God, I'm available. I remember walking on Main Street from the Hyatt Hotel. I stopped and I took a picture with my phone of Fidelity Bank, like just the building. I was like, why am I taking a picture of the building here, right now? Like, what, what is this? And I felt like I was releasing my career at that point. Oh man, I'm quitting my job, I'm quitting this salary, I'm quitting these benefits, I'm quitting vacation time. Um, I had a house, I had a truck. I had the American dream. I had everything I wanted. All my needs were fulfilled. I was close to family. I don't have a Bible degree. I'm not this prayer warrior. Never been to seminary. Africa's never been on my radar. I was never a let's go on safari guy. I was never let's go see the lions. Let's go see the Nile. Let's go dance like the Africans dance. Let's go see the sharks in South Africa. Like none of, none of that was ever on my radar. I didn't give Africa much care, much attention, didn't read up on it. So yeah, it was all a new experience, a new adventure. And maybe that's what I was looking for. Maybe, you know, I had kind of done this life. I had, uh, Burundi's a very welcoming country. It's kind of got a, a Midwest feel, I would say. People are happy to see you. They engage with you. Uh, they laugh with you. We want to support their ministry. They can, they know how to reach their own people. I think over this three years, I've come to realize a lot of it's just encouragement. Like, hey, there's a church in the West it's that one body, right? It talks about in Ephesians 1. You know, it's a very warm culture, so it's not a lot about what you get done, what boxes you check out. Hey, we got this done today. I mean, those things are great, but a lot of times it's just being together. It's, it's walking with one another. It's struggling. It's being challenged. It's encouragement. It's seeing somebody's life changed. And it's not, it's not what I bring to them, it's what Jesus brings to them. And if I can, if I can point out, hey, I see, the, I see Jesus in this. I see Jesus in you doing this. I see Jesus in your 
teaching to these kids so that they have an opportunity, so that they have hope, that they can, that they can dream. But just to see them live out um, God's plan for their life, their, to be their full potential, to know that they can do that, that, um, that maybe my story would inspire them, that I was a banker. <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing here. I never thought of Burundi before, but here we are. We're in, this, we're in this life, living it out for Jesus in whatever ways he has for us. We're just saying yes. How can we say yes to Jesus?